But now we have our panel, and that is the lovely Albie Amicona and the equally lovely Amy Nichol. Thank you very much for joining me today. So, we've heard what Keir Starmer's had to say, writing in the Telegraph. I mean, who knew that was a Labour Party? Thought it'd been the Observer, wouldn't you? Um, about how patriotic the Labour Party is. Well, most of them. What do you make to what you've heard so far? Um, well, yeah, writing in the Telegraph. I think that tells us uh, what Keir's trying to achieve from um, what he said today. I found it quite quite surprising, really, because we do have a conflicted relationship with our patron saint. It would just be disingenuous to admit otherwise. It's not just um, Emily Thornby who felt quite uncomfortable with St George's flag. It's a quarter of, of Britons who don't feel quite uh, aligned with the St George's flag for whatever reason. So I don't think we should be afraid to say patriotism doesn't begin and end with the St George's flag. And I think Keir was exactly right when he said the Tories can't possibly be patriotic at the moment because of what they've done to our country. I think the best thing Keir Starmer could do is, instead of talking about the flag, fly the flag by giving Britain something to be proud of again and giving us our country, it's the country back. The problem is we don't have much to celebrate at the moment. Sound a bit like Lee Anderson there, Amy. Did I? I want my country back. Is that, is that <laughs> what giving you just said? Giving us something to be proud of rather than um, banging on about the sentimentality around a flag that most people ultimately don't really hold on, like. Hold on, hold on. It seems to work quite well in Scotland, Albie, doesn't it? What's wrong with the English flag? There's absolutely nothing wrong with the English flag and I think it's actually quite refreshing to hear a Labour politician talk about patriotism and talk about the flag in a positive way. And the reason he is writing in the Telegraph is because he knows that there are lots of disaffected Tory voters out there that are looking for another party to vote for at the next general election. The question is, will they vote for Labour or will they vote for reform or will they stick with the Conservative Party? So this is some clever politicking from Keir Starmer, but ultimately his past, having been one of Jeremy Corbyn's cheerleaders, a man who couldn't even sing the national anthem at a Battle of Britain memorial um, celebration, his, that will always be part of Keir Starmer's legacy. So my question is, can you actually believe Keir Starmer when he talks about patriotism, when he talks about the flag being a beacon of Britishness, inclusion and so on? Is he actually but believable? But not, is it? Because if we look at an image like this, is that a beacon of inclusion? Does that feel welcoming? Does that make you feel proud to be British? Or even the Emily Thornberry one? Hold on, hold on, one. Hold on, hold on The Emily Thornberry one, like... Is this what is our Are you offended national by some... I'm not offended, but I can see why I can see why certain people wouldn't feel particularly why? comfortable. Why? Explain it, explain walking it. Walking along this street. Because why? since the 1970s, this has been hijacked by far-right groups. So I think certain people... That was celebrating an England football but match. You, but, but you know that if you saw... That, if you walked into a pub and it looked... And it was covered in these... Would you feel welcomed in that pub or would you feel yes. slightly threatened? Yes, Why wouldn't English, I feel welcomed? Because it's been for as long as time Sorry, I'm, I'm was not, since the 1970s. I'm not, I'm, it's been associated with the far right British Front, um, BMP. But Amy, I think it's lost touch with a lot who, of who, British Who has told you that? Um, the National Front. No, no, who, who has told you? Because I imagine the people you're talking about who feel uncomfortable walking around where there are England flags are probably not white. I'm not white. I'm asking you who has told you that they feel uncomfortable when they say in England. So flag. I was looking at some polling today from YouGov about why people don't dislike the St George's flag. And it was a quarter of Brits and it was mainly the association with the BMP and the National Front. And it was the hijacking of the St George's flag and the fact that these groups used it, which is a bit of not, not, not uh, a good a taste in people's mouths about the flying of that particular But shouldn't flag. it be reclaimed from those far-right elements? Well, you can try, but become, I think... To become a proper beacon of national unity in the same way that the Scottish flag is, in the same way that the American flag is, in the same way that the Welsh flag is. Well, I don't see why in the United Kingdom we have to be... You can be proud of your flag for any other nation apart from if you're English. But, not, but if you are English, you've got to push it away. It's not quite true, because um, the same amount of people were unhappy flying the Scottish flag, the Welsh flag, the American flag has similar connotations. It, it promotes the idea of nationalism, doesn't it, which is not inclusive. Why is nationalism not inclusive? Because it's saying... You can have civic nationalism or you can have ethno-nationalistic nationalism. It's interesting. They're two very different types of nationalism. If you speak to the Scottish National Party, what they talk about is civic nationalism. Now, they would say that nationalism was inclusive. But loads of people are unhappy with the, British, with the um, Scottish National Party and don't agree with the nationalism and want to be in, in the union. 
But they can they can disagree with what the SNP think, but they still fly the 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 the, the, the Salter, the flag of Scotland. What's, most people aren't offended by that flag. Well, a quarter of people don't really like that flag either. And every time we try to update the St George's flag or make it a little bit, a bit different or modernise it that in means, some way, but Amy, people are really unhappy with that as well. You keep talking about a quarter of people without talking about the three quarters of people who actually like it. Now, surely, as someone who believes in democracy, we should be focusing on the majority, which is 75%, and not the 25% of people who dislike it. But you agreed with me that it needs to be modernised. But that doesn't mean the flag needs to be changed. I think it can be reclaimed from the far right. And I think, to many extents, it has been reclaimed from the far right. When I see a St George's Cross, I don't think of the BNP. I think of England. I think of home. I think of my family. I think of the rolling green hills. I, I don't, don't think, think of some skinheads on a march. I don't think most people do think of um, those things. I think it needs, we need to put more effort into reclaiming it if we're going to achieve I think that might be what you think and not what the majority think. Perhaps.